Okay, my dear friends, we live in a time, in a period of history, where unfortunately, sadly, there is a tremendous ignorance of the pure words of God rightly divided. In other words, the majority of people they use Bibles which are not preserved, infallible, like the King James Bible, they don't see differences that God, divisions that God has put in his Bible. In 2 Timothy 2.15, you see, 2 Timothy 2.15, we are commanded to study the word of truth, rightly dividing. He says, study to show that self approved them to God, the workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so if people don't rightly divide the word of truth, they think that everything that is written in the Bible is written to us. It's all about us. First of all, the Bible is a book about the Lord. In time past, in the by now, in the age of come. The most important protagonist is the Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth. The mighty, the almighty God of Israel, as well as the Savior of the body, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, is the Godhead actually. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's first John 5 7. And especially now 2023, because of the events, you know, what up the taking places, like there is a war between Russia and Ukraine. There is now a war in Israel, Hamas, Palestinian against Israel. And by proxy, other countries are involved in those wars. People think that uh, that's it, you know, this is the end of the age, this is Jesus Christ coming back. And so they talk all the time about the, the second coming of Christ, uh, which also they think, uh, they say, are you ready? Second can Jesus coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? But it, maybe these people uh, don't know exactly what the, the second coming will imply. Another way to see the second coming is talking about the day of the Lord, and this find 21 times in the King James Bible. So what I'm gonna do? I got to go to the Bible, the Word of the Lord, to find out what the Lord says about anything. In this case concerning the day of the Lord. For example, it's a part of the prophetic program. And you, you, the first time I find this, the day of the Lord is here in Isaiah 2.12. For the day of the Lord is of host. That's one of the definitions, the armies of heaven. Shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up. And it shall be brought low. So if you go in, in the passage here, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon, they are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ship of Tarsh. I mean, the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. <laughs> And the ordinance of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So people, they should go to the Bible. I say should because I don't want to be a legalist, but I want to encourage you to do this. You don't need, and please don't, believe me like I am the authority, because I am not. I'm a simple ambassador for Christ, and concerning the preaching of the word of truth, I need to go to the Word of Truth, the King James Bible, and find out what it says about anything, in particular, the Second Coming, also called the Day of the Lord. It's not going to be a super duper wonderful, hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord, Jesus coming back, we get, no, 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 listen. Let's go to Isaiah 13, 6, where it says, how ye, how ye is crying, you know, for the Day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction for the, from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. 
and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They that shall be in pain as a woman that travails. They shall be amazed one to another. Their faces shall be as flames. And in verse 9, you see, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And it shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give the light. You see, that's exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 24 when he's giving the so called prophetic uh, discourse that is not involving us. And when I say us, I mean the body of Christ, which is the new creature. Why? Because the body of Christ, the new creature, where Christ is the head, and every believer is a member of the body of Christ, was a mystery. He in God, knowing the scriptures. Christ didn't mention, didn't teach what he revealed later to Paul, the revelation of the mystery, the mystery, the fact that he was going to create a new creature hmm? while he was on earth ministering to his earthly people. He said in Matthew 15, 24, I've been sent but only to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. He forbade his twelve when he went them, he sent them to preach the gospel of the kingdom. In Matthew 10, from verse 5 onwards, you know, the twelve Peter, James, and John, and so forth. He then said, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, do not enter in any city uh, of the Samaritans. Gentile Samaritans were excluded, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sea, cast the devil, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, freely you receive, freely give. I mean, is this is not happening now. I know that some people pretend to have these powers, but they don't. So this is not going to be, <laughs> as we say in Italy, rose fury, roses and flowers, you know, and butterflies. This is going to be the, the day of the Lord comes cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay dead the land desolate. Which land? The land of Israel. And it shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in, in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause the light to shine. Go in parallel, Matthew 24, and see this for yourself. Actually, I'll do this for you. One moment. Okay, just open this Bible. Uh, praise God. Yeah, just go here in Matthew. In Matthew 24. See what Jesus says. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. You see, the temple was there. It's not there now. It's been destroyed in the year 70. And his disciples came to him to, for, to show him that the building was a temple. And he said, and Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Very less unto you. There shall not be left here one stone upon another. There shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? This is not the catching up of the body of Christ that we call the rapture. This is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to his earthly nation, Israel, and of the end of the world. So already they say, your second coming, thy coming, and the end of the world. What did Jesus say? Did he give dates? Did he say, you know, well, this is not going to happen? He said, Jesus answered, said unto them, Take it, then no man deceive you. The number one thing, and this is happening even now, there is so much deception and lies and beguiling and you know manipulation of, of, of the population of this world. And anyway, Christ said this, you know, this is a sign that's gonna be very strong, very present in that time. Take it, then no man deceive you. Why? Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
People think, oh, I can't be deceived. Really? What about the Christ said, and they shall deceive many? Every one of us, starting with me, can be easily deceived unless you go to the source of divine truth, which is the King James Bible, and you start reading, respecting what is written literally, because if there is an allegory, God will make clear that it is an allegory, or, you know, an hyperbole or me metaphor. The point of the matter is, and you shall hear ye, who ye, us? No, this is the disciples. This would be the little flock. This would be the restored Israel at that time. Of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Must. It's not a question where may be. But the end is not yet. Wow, Jesus is very logically explaining. I mean, Jesus Christ is the truth himself. You know, it's God. True man and true God. Fully man, fully God. He is the incarnated personified truth he said it very clear i'm the way the truth and the life and no man can survive but by me i know there are many compromised people say well there are many ways to god no there aren't there are many words of god no there isn't there is only one truth and that's what i'm reading from not my truth the bible truth For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And guess what it says in verse 8, Matthew 24, 8. Oh, these are the beginning of sorrows. The day of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Are you ready? Please. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be head of all nations. For my name's sake. Who is this? The future Israel, not the modern Israel. And then shall men be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. This is Jesus Christ talking. I'm just reading, okay? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's not us. People in churches say, you have to persevere to the end to be saved. No, when you believe and receive the glorious gospel of the grace of God in Christ, the gospel of the cross, when you believe and receive how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture, the Lord himself saves you and seals you. Christ shed his blood. To atone for your sins, he keeps you, he saves you, and he keeps you saved because the Holy Spirit is sealing is, you know, in Ephesians 1 13, it says, When uh, after you believe the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you will, you will see, ye will see with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. But he is talking to his earthly people, Israel, he's not talking to us. The body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ. Denominations are not created by God. I'll let, I'll let, let me tell you this. Go and check out who created the denomination and when and what is that statement of faith. You're going to be really amazed how they are so far removed from the world of truth, uh, rightly divided. And this gospel of the kingdom, are we preaching now the gospel of the kingdom? Unfortunately, sadly, Churches, they, they, pray, they preach a, a, a diluted, watered down messianic Judaism saying that the kingdom you know, is here, Jesus is building it. It's not. It's been set aside on, on hold, so to say, on the back burn until the body of Christ is complete and we get caught up. But Jesus said in that period, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. That will be the future Antichrist in the middle of the great tribulation. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. With all the goodwill, let's say I want to really believe what this prophetic uh, uh, preaches, preaches that always now, this is happening. I am living uh, somewhere in the world very far away from Judea. In Australia, so I got to go get the plane, go to 
uh, go to Jerusalem there, and then I go to be in the region of Judea, and then I'm gonna flee on the mountains. I mean, come on, please. He's talking to them in the future. Let him, which is on the house top, not come down to take anything out of his house. And then they let him, which is the field, return back to the, take his clothes. Anyway, look what, you know. For then, pray that you might fly to be no in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, because they're going to be under the law, you know. For then shall be great tribulation. Jesus said this, I didn't say. Such a was not since the beginning of the world to do this time, no, ne no ever shall be. This is the, hasn't happened yet. It's not happening now. It will happen in the future. There is the body of Christ still on earth. We are here with the ministry of reconciliation. We are preaching the gospel, the grace of God, my friends. And what's happening now in Russia, Ukraine, what's happening in Israel, it's terrible, horrible things where lots of people, young, old, middle-aged, women, children, and soldiers are dying for different reasons than the will of God. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. How bad is going to be for the elect? But for the elect's sake, that's Israel's say, believers. Those days shall be shortened. I mean, look here. So much. What I was referring immediately after the tribulation of those days shall be the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give the light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Of course, those stars, they are angels. They are not the stars like they want to make us believe super gigantic. I mean, the earth is minuscule, is a little speck in comparison to Arturus or uh, Giggle Base. You know, I mean, come on. Now, look, look here. The day of the Lord. For the stars of the sea, Christ is summing up and giving more details of what the prophets before him already wrote because this is his word anyway the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give the light the sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause the light to shine and i will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and I will lay low the lotiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man as the, the wedge, uh, golden wedge of, of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall move out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Whew. Look here in Jeremiah 46.10. For this is the day of the Lord of God of hosts, a day of vengeance. We are in the dispensation of grace, my dear friends. I don't know if you realize. God is not doing this. And he's not going to do it tomorrow because somebody out there, out behind the pulpit of a big mega church or uh, a church that is still thinking that they are in the, in the kingdom age, eh? or the, the preaching of the kingdom, they're still preaching the kingdom. They, they say so because they got three or four titles before their name, they went to Bible school for three years, means nothing. God is not in the traditions of man. He, he, he doesn't care. He goes with his word, and you should do the same if you are a, a true grace believer. And especially if you rightly divide the word of truth, don't get fooled from, you know, propaganda. For this is the day of the Lord, the God of us, a day of vengeance. There might be a vengeance Sorry, I need to read slow because I get very excited and, uh, you know. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the, the sword shall devour and shall be satiated and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts as a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Oh, go up into Gilead and take balm of virgin, the daughter of Egypt, in vain shalt thou use many medicines, <laughs> for thou shalt be no cure. Oh man, you know. What about Ezekiel 13.5? It says, You have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the edge of the, for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. 
There's sin vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord says, And the Lord has not sent them. And they made us others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision? Have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas they say, The Lord says it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold them against you, says the Lord God. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. There shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. Oh, look at this. Ezekiel 33. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be a time of the Eden. Joel 1.15. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a distraction from the Almighty shall come. I don't know how, you know, that's, well, I don't know. I know. If I imagine with my vain imagination to be an anointed prophet of the Lord God, and I start to mix scriptures that talk about the earthly nation of Israel and scriptures that talk about the new creature, the body of Christ, and put them together, mix, I'm going to come up with a confusion a confused message. Now, I might be not very good in giving the message because of my bad pronunciation. I'm Italian, I'm not English. Because I don't read, I read very fast. Sometimes I don't read well. But the point of the matter, I'm telling you, since Acts 9, till the catching up of the body of Christ, we are in, the, in, the, in that period, period where I mean, we are in a in in phase, okay, called the dispensation of the grace of God. God is dispensing grace and peace. God is offering the free gift of eternal life, salvation to all men, Jews and Gentiles. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Believes what? This gospel, how the Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Practically this gospel now goes to all men. Now there is no even difference. God is not looking at Israel like a favor nation because Israel is stumbled at, stumbling, you know, at, at the rock, which is Christ. They crucified him. They rejected him. They diminished. They fallen. At the moment, Israel, God is not present on earth. Please open your eyes. Don't go with 1948, the parable of the fig tree, because that's an interpretation of evangelical churches which created confusion beyond belief. There's nothing to do with the fig tree parable. It's nothing to do with 1948-49. Look here. In Joel 2, 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land, which land? Israel, tremble. For the day of the Lord comes, for it is nigh at hand. What did Peter in Acts 2 preach? Re a reference to Joel. Acts 2 is not the beginning of the, the, the church. It's the continuation of the Jerusalem church. God was adding to the church, you know, the, of Jerusalem, the temple church, you know, the, the little flock. Other believers, other disciples, I believe that God said in that dispensation, nothing to do with us. We were not there. There was not even a Jew. No, no, sorry, not even a Gentile in the day of Pentecost, which was a feast of, you know, of Israel. Nothing to do with us. Joel 2, 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and send an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the Lord tremble, for the day of the Lord comes for its night hand. Joel 2, 11, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong, they execute his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Eh? Come on now. I don't know if I can do this, but it's jumping. 
Yeah. I remember a nice person, I'm not judging the person, but the doctor I need to judge. David Wilkerson blow the trump in Zion because they identify the body of Christ as a replacement theology like we are now the Israel of God. We are not. We are different and divided, diverse, diverse, diverse thing. We are the new creature, the body of Christ, which starts with Paul, the first of the pattern, and continues every day somewhere who hears and believes the gospel of the cross and believes it is added to the new creature, which is a spiritual body called the body of Christ. Nothing to do with denomination A, B, C, D, F, G. There are 400, 300 main denominations of 40,000 splits, I mean, minimum. There are more than 2,000 <coughs> Bible versions, which I call perversion, because was not God able to speak His word and preserve it in one book? What is that? What kind of God is that? He speaks, they write down His word, and then He doesn't really know, so every version changes everything. They add, they diminish. You really, you really sh should be ashamed of yourself because you don't write it about the word of truth. What about Joel 3.14? More multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. You see the theme? And the stars shall withdraw the shining. You see? For the Lord shall roar out of Zion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And after his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake but the Lord will be the hope of his people. Which people? Israel, the, the believing Israel, the remnant, and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through her anymore. People, it's necessary to say, okay, I admit I was wrong. Lord, I want to learn the truth. If you really want the truth, God is going to give you the truth because He is the truth and He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants it. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, 2 and 3. The will of God in this dispensation of grace, among other things I can talk about, but no, now He will have all men to be saved, men and women, of course, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why Christ died on that cross. Not to create religion, Christian religion or denominations. Jesus Christ came in this world to save sinners out of Israel and out of the Gentiles. And now we, get, we go with this message of grace. Gospel of grace, the gospel of Christ to all men. If they receive it. If they don't receive it, we can do nothing. God is offering reconciliation. If people don't want to be reconciled, even though it's provided by the death, a, a, a death by resurrection of Christ, we can force them. If you're a Muslim to start with, or you are a Baptist, or a Pentecostal, or a Presbyterian, or an atheist, or a Roman Catholic, or, or an indifferent, whoever it is, you are a woman or a man, if you are a, a great, uh, uh, deep in sin, sin, or uh, light sin, but you're still a sinner, because all are sin, you can be saved and made part of the new creature by the, po the power of the Word of God, the blood of Christ, who atone for our sins, all of them. And God himself makes of you a child of God. But that's if you believe. If you don't believe, you are in dire straits, I tell you now. Not only for the great tribulation. Even now, God forbid you die unsaved which means loss, you will go to hell and then you will be consigned for eternity into the lake of fire. I urge, I plead with you, believe and receive this glorious gospel of the cross before too late, which will be in your life if you die unsaved. But also, I'm talking to these people that go to churches. Don't confuse the day of the Lord's second coming with the catching up of the body of Christ. I see all the time on the platform, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, where people say, rapture is a, is, a, is a lie. Why? Oh, Darby invented. Who is in the world is this Darby? They always come with this Darby invented, this prestationalism. You must be kidding. The Jesuit. You kidding me? 
Read the word of God and find out for yourself. And you can't to be fully persuaded in your mind. I'm, I'm very intense. I'm not angry. Actually, I'm furious. <laughs> Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is day for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and no light. Yes, Amos, another prophet, said this is a minor prophet. No, I don't think so. This definition of major, minor, is just because Isaiah reads 66 chapters, okay? But it's not greater than Amos because it's the same Lord speaking. And give a revelation to add to revelation so the people can know the truth if they read and believe what is written and if they write it by the word of truth and not just make a, you know a course a, a, a minestrone soup you know minestrone when you put all veggie and make a soup of you you, you put together mushrooms with broccoli and, and cauliflower and this and that no no you've got to write it by the word of truth you need to write it by the minister of the lord jesus christ to his earthly people Israel, that he said very clearly in Matthew 15, 24, I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the minister of the Lord Jesus from heaven, talking to us through the Apostle Paul. Woe ah. oh, unto you that desire the day of the Lord, for what end is for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and no light. As if a man died, did flee from a lion and bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and no light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, say this, and I will not smell in your solemn uh, assemblies. People think, you know, the God, you know, he wants to give me the sacrifice, give me the sacrifice. God wants you to believe on Him in Him and put all your trust in His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross of Calvary to atone for our sins. It's no interest in your rituals. He said this to Israel, but He says that to us. You know all these things that people meet and they have to go through a service, a rigmarole, and them, and music, and dump, and leap, and jump, and jump. And... That's nothing to do with God. No, the Holy Spirit is not the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is not a clown. He's God. Learn the truth. Though you offer me burnt offerings or, in your, or your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take that away from me the noise of thy songs. Christian music now, rock music, disaster, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as well as a righteousness and mighty stream. That's what God is interested. Now we can produce this. That's the work of the Spirit in us when we believe and let the, the Spirit of God, the, the, the life of Christ, flow out through, through us. But the reality is, you, me, us, the, the sinners in the flesh in Adam, you can't change that. We need to admit, to re recognize that we are sinners. And when we do, without prayers, without uh, rituals, we need to simply believe in our heart as between me and God and the mediator is Christ how the Christ died for my sins was better rose again the third day to justify me because Paul says that Christ was delivered for our offenses and was risen again for our justification. Hmm. Look here. Have you offered me unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? Who is he talking to? To you Baptists or Presbyterian or Pentecost or Methodists or Jehovah's Witnesses? No way, listen, house of Israel, that's not us. That's a, if you say that you think that you are Israel, that's a identi identity theft. Okay, even if I'm a modern Jew, that's identity theft. This kind of house of Israel is the house of Israel the Lord is talking here in the scriptures. But he have born the tabernacle of your Moloch and hewn new images, the stars of your God, which you made it to yourselves. Therefore, will I cause you to go into captivity beyond my Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Amos 5.20 Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and no light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Obadiah 1.15 For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. 
as thou done shall be done unto this. The law again. The reward, thy reward shall return upon thy own head. <sighs> Zephaniah 1 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. I think that we all need, including the grace believer, actually the grace believer first, to understand that yes, God has given us grace, we are forgiven, we are hid, our life is hid in Christ with God. When Christ was alive shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. He is a great God, but you know, he's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a mighty, almighty God. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. Before you open your mouth and you, you preach the word of God, verify that that's what God wants you to do now. That you preach and teach the word of God according to what the Lord desires according to His will in this dispensation of grace of God. Why do you think we call to follow Paul to follow Christ? So do we worship Paul? You must be kidding. Because Paul has received from the Lord from heaven, from Christ, revelations after revelation, visions, and the doctrine which is called the mind of Christ, in the letters of Paul, Romans to Philemon, which needs to be read and understand there is progressive revelation and comes out a picture so glorious and marvelous to the glory of God, where you, the sinner, me, the sinner, and no more sinners at the point in the eyes of God, we become children of God. He makes of us children of God, out of Adam into Christ. All thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord has prepared sacrifices, be this guest Zephaniah 1 14 the great day of the Lord is near is near hastes greatly even the voice of the dead the Lord the mighty man shall cry that bitterly people won't <clears throat> in their physical pro you know strength that's nothing for God he's interested in the salvation of your soul he wants your spirit saved sealed and prepare to be in the new glorified body in heavenly places in Christ, with Christ in Christ and with Christ forever in heavenly places to the glory of God in the future after that we get caught up or you know to be with the Lord forever but this is the day of the Lord is gonna come on the earth Zechariah 14 1 behold the day of the Lord comes and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee now there is this in this because the day of the Lord there is that the day of the Lord Jesus Christ is completely different first Corinthians 5 5 5 5 in 1 Corinthians 1 14 this is the day of the Lord Jesus is not the day of the Lord in ten, even though Jesus is the Lord in, in, in meaning the day of, of, of vengeance but Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night well guess what the Lord Jesus Christ for me as a member of the body of Christ saved and sealed by grace not because anything good I've done but because of it, what he has accomplished is not a thief for me is my Lord is my Savior is my Redeemer is the head of the body the one to whom I owe everything my physical life because he allowed me to be born but also the spiritual life because he saved me and made of me not born again Christian he made of me not born again Christian Israel he made of me a member of the new creature which is the body of Christ even the Apostle Paul which is prophetic program it says in 2 Peter 3 10 but the day of the Lord shall come will come as a thief in the night you see in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise you see the thief before them and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also sh and the works of that therein shall be burned up look here Seeing then all the old things that you saw, one man or a person ought you be, is writing to Israel. He's writing to, the, the, you know, if you go to Peter, you see he's writing to, his, to Jews, to Israel, to the believing, the, the little flock. He's not writing to us. Peter is a great apostle, but not an apostle to the body of Christ. So, let me tell you once and for all, and I finish with this. You know what we're waiting for? We're waiting for, for this. The body of Christ is waiting for this. Oh, praise God. First Thessalonians 4.13 But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe, <coughs> what we need to believe <coughs> to be saved? 
Sorry. <clears throat> for if we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again to their death to justify us, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So the next time somebody say, Oh, the rapture is false doctrine. You say, Shh, shut up. This is the word of the Lord. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together. Rapture, rapture, caught up. Oh, I can go to the Greek. Harpazo, into the Latin. Rapiemur. That's why you say rapture from the verb rapper. The reality is, in English say caught up from the verb to catch, catch up. <laughs> together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord. Then we which are alive remain. Okay. Just look. <laughs> For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, three things, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Who are the dead in Christ? Our brothers and sisters who died before the, the bodies are asleep, but the spirit is alright with Christ because the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the, vo with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That preaching the second coming in this dispensation is not comfort. Because I, I told you, I showed you, it's the day of the Lord is going to be fireworks, but not pleasant, you know. Not pleasant. <laughs> marching the multitudes in the valid decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valid decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and he utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, on my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and then shall no stranger pass through it anymore. Remember what Jesus says. Remember what Jesus says in Matthew 24 and the synoptic. Eh? Matthew 24. When he says, what does he say? For then shall be great tribulation. No, a little bit. It's called, it's called Jacob's trouble. You don't believe me? Look here. Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble period, which is the seventh week of the prophet Daniel. Alas, for that day is great. There's none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. That's what God is going to do for his remnant. Go and read for yourself now. I really need to stop. What is it? 43 minutes. Thank you very much for your patience. I'll finish with this. I finish with this. If I can open it, you need to see this distinction here: law and grace. In law, Jesus is King of Kings; in grace, is Lord of Lords. In the under the law, is required for them to be repent, change their mind, and get water baptism. Under grace, is required that we believe. First Corinthians fifteen one four: How the Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, was better as again. For our justification. Gospel 1 is regarding 12 tri tribes of Israel. Gospel 2, body of Christ. Prophecy, mystery. Israel, Gentiles. Faith plus works, faith only. Jesus in the flesh, the risen Christ and glorified. 12 disciples, the Apostle Paul, Peter and, G and James and John belongs to the 12. The Apostle Paul is Paul, Silvanus, Timotheus, Barnabas, Titus, the new apostles. 
Lordship of the Azo Israel was sending to the message Jews and Gentile alike, no more distinction. Earthly ministry, heavenly ministry. Kingdom of heaven, seated in heavenly places. We already see the death. Circumcision, uncircumcision. Second coming, rapture. Millennium, kingdom, heaven. Genesis to John, Genesis, John, Hebrews, Revelation. So practically you go from Genesis up to Acts 8, and then you have Hebrews, Revelation, and now Scripture is Roman to Philemon. Even though, as I said to you, we study all the Scripture, because all the Scripture is inspired. You need to write and divide the word of truth, okay? If you haven't believed yet, I encourage you to do it now. Believe how the Christ died for your sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried the rose again the day according to the scripture. He was delivered for our offenses, your offenses, my offenses. He was risen again for a justification. Believe, receive, be saved and sealed and start studying the word of truth rather divided. In the freedom that God gives you is not an obligation, it's an encouragement. Okay? Thank you, Father Almighty God. We give you glory. Amen and amen.